Thank you. Um, and I just have a um, couple of comments and a few questions. Um, first, regarding uh, 1162, um, you know, the community um, programs that are in our combat for gun violence. Um, I worked with Amanda Brown um, um, in Bridgeport uh, with a credible messenger program, um, and I heard great stories. Um, she told me about a lot of success that, that was had in, in California. Um, and it definitely um, works. It definitely helps. Um, uh, Chief, you mentioned um, the best way of doing recruitment is our police officers being in the community, talking about how great of a job it is, how rewarding it is, and bringing people into the profession. Uh, and that's a very similar um, segue into that credible messenger program. Um, and I think it's so important. Um, when we were talking about this, you started to talk about a few uh, stats or statistics when it comes to the gun violence in New Haven. Uh, how many shootings were there um, um, compared to um, murders? C can you break down those numbers? I was taking notes and I, I wanna make sure I got it correctly. So in 2022, we had 14 homicides and 107 non-fatal shootings. And then what about with the shots, detecting the shots with the shots? Uh, 300 and it was either 380 to 400, I think 389 or something like that. But that's gunshot incidents. Now, if one incident might have had 20 rounds fired, that's a lot different than one shot fired, right? But, um, you know, it could go up to as if you counted individual shots, it could go up as high as close to 3,000, right? But, um, Got it. but those are separate incidents. Yeah. Um, you know, where there could have been numerous shots back and forth or one gun, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's one a day, essentially. Um, and, and is that up from the year prior? No, it's down from the year prior. Very good. Okay. Um, and would you say from five years ago, is that up or down? Um, it's, it's up from five years ago. So uh, 20... 2013 to 2019, we saw a huge decrease. We actually doing these type of programs, Project Longevity, Project Safe Neighborhoods, working with CTVIP, we we averaged 65 non-fatal shootings and 11 homicides. Now, 2021, uh, 2020, 2021 really went high. 2021, we had 26 murders and 112 non-fatal shootings. Um, so you saw a spike 2020, 2021, we've been able to somewhat get it under control and get down again in 2022. And what do you think um, contributes to getting it down? Um, or, or you think it's more of a, as you said, from 13 to 19, you take a, a chunk of, of years and get an average, um, say from 21 to 23 or 20 to 22. Um, would you say there's one thing that was able to bring this down or is it is it just kind of a... Yeah, I think there's a couple of things. So during the COVID years, there was no public interaction. There was no trials going on. So you'd arrest someone for a gun or a shooting. They might be able to get out on bond and they were back out. We actually thought due to the pandemic, the violence would go down. It actually went up, right? So now we're in a position where we're able to do this face-to-face um, -face contact. We're able to go do custom notifications. The other thing we do is call in. We call everybody in about 30 or 40 people in and we give them a message and the message is we want you safe alive and out of jail but if you pick up a gun we got the full force of the atf the dea the fbi new haven pd we're gonna we're gonna put you back in jail we don't want to do that so a lot of the messaging stopped during covid you know we also had a tough time with uh the murder of george floyd and the perception towards police and, and i'm gonna be def, de, deadly honest police uh, proactivity slowed down even after that, right? We saw large protests in the city. I'm very proud of this city. We saw no cars burn, no no, no destruction at all, just large um, protests. Um, and I think that's the relationships we built with the people on the side of me here and the rest of the community through community policing. The other thing we're doing different in 2022 is we don't have enough numbers for it, but we, we have walking beats. The community asked for walking beats. We're doing it. We're figuring it out and we're doing it. And that type of face-to-face -face interaction and people getting to know their cops in their neighborhood, that's working again. It's just, we need more cops to do it, right? So that falls back on the retention and, and, and recruitment end. But 
Um, but no, I would say those are some of the key factors. And so when you talk about the shooting and 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 you have the the ATF or you have shooting task force, I know a couple of officers that are on some of the task forces within the department. Um, and I also kind of see the other end. We do some criminal defense work in my um, my business as an investigator. We support um, attorneys often doing a lot of criminal defense stuff. We get a lot of cases out of New Haven, so I kind of see both ends uh, of of the situation. Um, and it's quite alarming to see how often th this is happening and how young these kids are that are getting in these shootings. Um, you know, when we talk about the gun violence and basically a shooting every day, and and in 2022 there was 14 deaths, uh, 107 people shot. Um, do you have any idea um, how many of those weapons or or crimes that are being committed are being done with um, uh, illegal gun owners or someone with a with with legal um, uh, possession of a firearm? Do you, do you have any numbers that that are broken down? Yeah, I don't have them in front of me. I did have them. Uh, I, I, I can't get to that. But um, I would say the majority is people possessing illegally possessing a weapon, right? Whether they be un, someone underage who can't possess a weapon, it's a stolen weapon, it's a ghost gun, it's um, a convicted felon with a gun. I would say the majority, 90 plus percent, um, are the people are possessing the weapons illegally. Okay. And... I thought that was probably that was my thought. Um, from 2020 to maybe 23, where we are now, um, do you think there's a lot of repeat offenders of, of these shootings? As we said, sometimes people were getting out. Um, are we seeing a lot of, of re repeat offenders? Yeah, that's what I f reported to the um, I think it's the Public Safety Board on. Um, Monday, when we talked about um, the repeat offender bill, we're not we're we see most of our people that have either been shot or involved in shootings at the at a forty plus percent have prior gun convictions, prior shootings, um, let out on by manslaughter. Um, you know the data shows that it is a small number of people, but they're repeat offenders. You said let out on manslaughter, so there's individuals that would get let out after being. Well, for example, the kid was shot, shot somebody and killed him. They, in turn, stated that the guy had a gun. And I think in this situation, it was like a plastic gun. So he shot at the guy in self-defense. He ended up being charged with mans manslaughter second. He did two years. He got out. He just had, we just had a armed standoff with him Sunday. He had another two guns and was in his house threatening to kill his girlfriend. I mean, after doing two years on a manslaughter second. So there's some things that slipped through the cracks here that on Monday, that's what I was testifying for. Got it. Okay. Um, I just wanted to clarify it when I heard those numbers. That's something that's just alarming. You know, you, you mentioned that you had a lot of, of your residents calling for a walking beat. They want the police in the communities. What are they saying, uh, the individuals that are in these communities when this is happening over and over again? What are they saying about this? The fact that they know, they probably know these kids, these kids are in the neighborhood. What are they saying about what I just heard you just say? So, so I, you know, the majority of the community, since it's such a small number that commit crimes, are good people that want this there. But you know what they want? They want police that they know. Once they get to know the police, the police have a walking beat. They know when this guy shows up, it's John the cop who walks in New Hallville. That's the type of policing they want, and that's what we're trying to offer here in New Haven. Um, but they do want the police in those neighborhoods. And then as we build the trust, if, if you notice, we're going to be – we've solved quite a few of the homicides from last year and this year. Coming into this year, we're about to make a few more arrests, and that's based on trust. We've been building that trust back up, you know, and it's incidents like – the murder of George Floyd, the incident in Memphis. But listen, we had our own incident in New Haven, right? So we have to build that trust back up, move forward, and we are getting more community help. And, and that's one thing I'm proud of from our officers too. Absolutely. And I do I do hear a lot of good, and I know that there are incidents and they happen. Um, as we said, majority of these shootings are done by a small group. Um, and there, there are things that happen with, you know, um, police departments that may uh, 
tarnish the relationship between the community and, and, and law enforcement. But the, the vast majority is great interactions from what I've seen and heard um, from friends and family that live in uh, New Haven on Ferry Street. Um, 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 and overwhelmingly, I hear a lot of positive about the relationship between the law enforcement and those good uh, citizens that want the police in that area. Um, I, I hear a lot of that. So I just wanted to let you know and, and, and um, just um, thank you for what you guys do. Keep up the good work and, and stay safe. And hopefully we can address some of these concerns. And I do think that mess the, the programs like Credible Messenger and all the great work that that um, that Leon and, and Kate do and, and so many others like uh, Amanda Brown, um, you know, I think there's work to be done. And I think that's a, a great step in the right direction. Um, look forward to see what comes out of out of um, 1162 and, and see if we could address some of these issues that are really affecting our cities. Again, thank you very much. Thank uh, you for answering my questions. Thank you, Senator.